So in this last video, I want to talk a little bit about um, server-side processing again. And, um, and then I want to um, talk about some of the new HTML5 controls and, um, and just some browser differences and some tools you can use to uh, find out more about all of this stuff, um, some resources. Um, so what I mentioned that when, um, when we um, submit a form, it needs to be processed on a web server and a web server could be something that you install locally on your local computer so you can test locally or it could be um, on an actual web server. And the web server has to be set up to support um, whichever kind of um, processing that you want to do. So just as an example, if you're using a Windows server, it's just um, very naturally going to want to process ASP files. Now you can set it up to do other stuff, but um, by default it works with ASP, um, ASP.NET, etc. So um, if you use an Apache server, like Linux, Apache, MySQL, and that, that goes with PHP. And um, so you have to act actually have some scripting in there to handle it, and then you have to have the server to process the scripting. Um, so when we when we do this, then what happens is you send you send the request and then the server processes it and then the server spits back out HTML which then goes back to the web client. So if you try to do any coding and you don't have a web server, um, it's not going to work. Uh, even if you name your file with an extension like .php or .asp. But there are some ways to make um, make your forms work without using a server. So um, so Felky actually has a, a video that gives a general overview of form processing and then the notes that come with chapter 10 uh, also have some links to some remotely hosted form processing sites. So let's go look at that. And um, so these are free and the idea is that it makes it really easy for you to set up a simple form and um, I haven't used these so uh, you know, you could give them a try if you wanted to actually have some, have your form do something. Um, so we're going to talk now about these HTML5 form controls. And so here's some resources for uh, looking at how w well those work in different browsers. So um, these new HTML HTML5 forms, they're mostly created to um, to extend um, HTML to work better in um, in the mobile environment um, but also it does some simple validation as well so what I'd like to do is just kind of go through these and then show them to you and show that show you how they work so the first one is um, email and the idea here is that um, you use the type equals email and then if somebody doesn't enter an email address then it'll prompt you and it'll say please enter an email address. And the same thing happens with URL. Type equals URL and um, so let's take a look at that one. I think I have an example of that. Okay so here's an example where um, if I don't type in an, an, uh, a valid URL when I submit it, it'll pop up and it'll say, please enter a URL. And you'll notice if you if you take a look at this on different browsers, it'll look different. So there in Chrome, it looks quite a bit different. It looks a little bit more elegant. And then notice if I do use a full URL, And then I hit send form, then it doesn't pop up with that little message. Um, the telephone, um, tell, type equals tell, this isn't going to look any different on your, um, on your browser and it's not going to behave any differently. Um, oh, I guess I didn't even put in a, an example of this because it doesn't look any different, it doesn't behave any differently. Um, 
But what it does do differently is that in some telephones, when you use type equals tell and then the user starts to type it in, it'll come up with the little um, keyboard for entering a telephone number. So it just makes it easier for the user. Um, search box, you could use type equals search when you're doing a search. Um, data list control, um, it just, it's kind of, it's a lot like the select, except it's a little bit more elegant. And if it doesn't work, what happens is it degrades so that, um, that they would have to enter it themselves. But it's just kind of a nice way to, to offer them some choices. And um, I think I do have an example of that. Yeah, here we go. So here it is. Um, when you click, then you can actually choose from one of the selections that they give you. So this is what it looks like in Firefox. So um, so another example, we, we have um, something called range that will give you a slider like this. So let's see what that looks like. So then it, it just gives you a slider and you specify the, um, the low and the high number. So that's kind of nifty. And then something similar to that we call a spinner where you again you give the max and the min and it'll it'll look like this. So again, if this one um if it doesn't work, like if the browser doesn't support it, then you the user would just enter a number. So this one I love, um date, type equals date, because it will pop up a little calendar. Now to do this you used to have to do um used to have to do um, some JavaScript to make that work. Now let's go look at it. And so when I do this in Firefox, you'll notice that nothing happens. It doesn't hap nothing happens in this version of Firefox. But if I go over to Chrome and give it a try, then what happens is it pops up the calendar. So this is an example of a feature uh, that doesn't work in Firefox but does work in Chrome. Um, so the other one that I wanted to show you is a color. And um, so the idea here is when you pop to choose a color, you come up with this um, color well. And this looks the same in my version of Firefox and in Chrome. So here's what the coding looks like. And um, so you can kind of practice and um, try things in different browsers. But there's also some tools that will um, show you which features are supported by which browsers. And the idea is you don't want to just not use something, but you want to make sure that it degrades gracefully. Um, so so that there's, uh, for example, if you have date, when you choose from that calendar, it puts the date in a particular format. So you need to make sure that if they're using an older browser that you um, check and make sure that the format of the date is in the proper format. And then you might want to give them a hint as well. So um, just going back to uh, going back to Firefox, here's the table that shows the browser browser support. I really like this one. It's not in the um, in the textbook authors list of things, but I like this one because I think the tables really makes it easy to use. But there's some other there's some other ones that are kind of nice. Like this one, um, can I use .com, and that's easy to remember. And all you, what you do is you just type in whichever thing that you want to um, check, and then hit enter, and then it just shows which browsers support it, and what the issues are, etc. So um, if you want to check and see how well your browser does with all of this new stuff, you can go to html5test.com and it shows you how well your browser does. Um, and then you can um, actually compare to other browsers. Like you'll, you'll notice that Chrome does pretty well. Um, it does the best right now um, compared to other browsers. And then you could also look at tablets and mobiles and see how well they support these new things. Like when you go to um, mobile, 
then you'll see that um, Opera does pretty well. So it might be worth your while to download Opera and use that on your smartphone if you want these um, new controls. Um, so I think that's it and um, hopefully you've gotten a feel for how these um, forms work and uh, what you can do with forms.